Today, I want to talk about why selling the Sony ZV-1 was a big mistake. And I know that a lot of you are here from my previous ZV-1 videos, so thank you for sticking around and watching this video. Initially, I sold the ZV-1 because I bought the a7 IV, which meant I already had an a7 III, an a7 IV, and a ZV-1. And in my head, I was thinking, What's the point of keeping the ZV-1 when you've got the a7 III? You can just use that as the backup camera and use the a7 IV for everything else. I thought having two larger, better cameras would be the better option than having a ZV-1 as well. And what I failed to realize is that the ZV-1 is just such a fantastic compact little camera. And once I got rid of it, I began to realize the mistake that I made. So while the a7 series offers amazing image quality, obviously a lot better with a full frame sensor than the ZV-1. What you also end up getting is a really cumbersome experience when you just want to get out you know, and shoot and you want to get maybe a little bit of B-roll. Having to set up a camera all the time that's big and bulky is just so draining for me. It's not something I really enjoy doing to be quite honest. Whereas the ZV-1 was just so tiny, I could quickly grab it out of my bag, flip open the screen, start recording, grab a little B-roll shot and that's it, I was done. I didn't really need to put too much thought and effort into it. It just made making these kind of videos a lot easier. And I've noticed since getting rid of the ZV-1, making B-roll for my reviews and any kind of extra content for my other businesses has just become so much more time consuming. And, to, and I've actually been putting it off. I've been kind of, no, I'll do it later because I have to get out the big camera and charge up all the batteries and switch out the lenses and all this kind of stuff. It just means it kind of goes on the back burner because I just can't be bothered. And it's not that I'm necessarily a lazy person, it's just that I've already experienced an easier, quicker way of doing things. And having to go sort of backwards on yourself and then take more time to do stuff, carry around heavier equipment, keep swapping out the lenses, you just end up not wanting to do it. Something that I really loved about the ZV-1 is that I could just get it out of my camera bag and the 4K quality out of that camera is just fantastic. It was comparable to the a7 III, to be quite honest. And the autofocus on the ZV-1, it's actually better than the a7 III. And something I've noticed when I do my videos for my channel, I've been using the a7 III for B-roll and that thing loses focus all the time compared to my a7 IV, which is, which is really good. But the a7 III compared to the ZV-1 is like two different classes when it comes to autofocus. So what do I do at this point? You know, I can't just complain about this. I have to do something about it and I have but I haven't got another ZV-1. There's another camera that's come out that I think has outclassed the ZV-1 massively if you're focused primarily on video. It's this, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This tiny little camera can record 4K all the way up to 120 FPS. It has log profiles. For me, this is essentially all I ever needed. And although there are a few differences, clearly this one does not have a camera style format. And also the ZV-1 has much more extensive zoom. This is more than enough for my B-roll footage on this channel. And the thing that appealed to me most about this camera is how easy it is to switch between vertical and horizontal shooting. I do a lot of vertical stuff for Instagram and TikTok for not just my YouTube channel, but a business that I run as well. And being able to just flip this into vertical mode and film and then be able to edit it super quickly, log footage as well, made this a no brainer for me. There's also a few other great features like active tracking. So what you can do is you can highlight something on the screen and then I can put this on a slider to get some B-roll and the, the, the gimbal will follow what it is that I'm looking at. So I can get some really interesting slider shots with this. The Osmo Pocket 3 also has a much more ergonomic grip if I just wanna be out and about filming. Sometimes filming vertical or even just videos of yourself with a, with a sort of horizontal camera can be quite awkward, whereas this just fits way better in the hand. And let's not forget the fact that this actually has a gimbal built into it. So when I had the ZV-1, I did put it on a gimbal a few times, but just that extra time you need to balance it and get it sorted every single time you use it is not something I really want to be doing. And I don't really want to have to carry around the camera and the gimbal separately when everything can just be built into one product. Having log as well on this camera is crazy and the fact you've got 4K 120 as well. These are features you don't even get on super expensive high-end video cameras. So the fact that you've got it in this for what is a reasonable price point, in my opinion, it's clearly the best option. 
I think there are a few instances where the ZV-1 might be the better option. If you're more primarily focused towards photography, I think it would be better because you've got that extra zoom. You've essentially got a 24 to 70 equivalent. Whereas on the Osmo Pocket 3, you don't have that much zoom. I think you only get around a four times digital zoom, which again, is gonna be nowhere near as good as an actual built-in lens zoom that you get on the ZV-1. So although I do think the ZV-1 is a fantastic camera and I'd really not hesitate to buy one again, I do think the Osmo Pocket 3 at this current time is the best option for you. If you're looking for something that shoots video, that's easy, lightweight and small, this has pretty much every feature you need. I would like to do some videos on the Osmo Pocket 3. If you'd like to see those, leave a comment down below. Let me know that you want to see them. I do put a lot of effort and time into these videos. So knowing you guys actually would like to see that, be great. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out my channel. If you want to see more from me, subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when I upload another video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.